Have you ever wondered what makes the Godfather movies so riveting? The Godfather trilogy is one of the few movies of this caliber ever made about the mob. This is due, in part, to the fact that Francis Ford Coppola's film series was based on real-life people and events. What were the inspirations for this saga of family, crime, and power? Let's take a look at one of cinema's greatest film's origin stories. It's possible that a lot of people have no idea of the fascinating and, in some cases, terrible real-life events that served as the inspiration for The Godfather. The true stories about the compelling and oftentimes grim criminal underworld from the notorious five families of New York City to the infamous Sicilian Mafia in Italy were the basis for the Godfather trilogy. Still, Puzo has said he did not base any of his characters directly on real people, but instead drew on his imagination and research to create fictional characters that embodied certain aspects of organized crime. Nevertheless, it would be worthwhile to speculate as to the origins of the characters in the films based on his novel. Here are some of the trilogy's origin stories, both big and small, starting with the family patriarch, Don Vito Corleone. Who was Vito Corleone the Godfather based on? Portrayed by Marlon Brando, Vito Corleone was a composite of real-life gangsters that may have included Carlo Gambino, Frank Costello, Joe Bonanno, Joe Profaci, and perhaps even Vito Genovese. How was Don Corleone like these mafia bosses? As far as we can tell, Vito used his legitimate business as a front for his illegal activities, and he managed to keep his network small and close-knit like Profaci. Similar to Gambino, Vito had a reputation for being a low-profile person. He had traits like Costello in that he was strategic, reasonable, and offered sound advice, keeping his position of power through diplomatic skills and ties to powerful corporate and political figures. Additionally, he prohibited his family from participating in the narcotics trade. Vito was like Ginovese, in that he was admired by many and feared by his rivals. He was recognized for his brilliance, loyalty, and negotiating skills. While Vito Corleone is portrayed as being a lot like these historical figures, he is also shown to be a complex and nuanced character with strong family values and personal honor. Unlike Vito, however, is unlike these real-life organized crime figures, because they can't be portrayed realistically in such a sympathetic light. Who was the silent traitor Tessio based on? Salvatore Tessio may have been based on a real-life mafia boss, Joseph Bonanno. Bonanno was a powerful and influential member of the mob. He was known for his cunning and shrewd business sense, as well as his ability to work with other mafia families. Like Salvatore Tessio, Bonanno was also involved in a plot to betray his boss and was eventually exiled from the mafia. However, he is also believed to be based on Gaspar Di Gregorio. Di Gregorio had ambitions of heading the Bonanno crime family. He felt jealous when Bill, Bonanno's son, claimed the role of mafia boss in his father's absence. As a result, Di Gregorio led a revolt against the Bill's faction and attempted to convene a conference between the two factions in order to assassinate the Bill, just as Tessio did in the movie. In contrast to the power-hungry Di Gregorio, Tessio wanted someone more suited for the job as the new Corleone Don, and in his mind, that man was certainly not Michael. Michael found out and had Tessio taken for a ride, as they say, whereas the real-life mobster, Di Gregorio, simply faded away after his failed assassination attempt. Who was casino mogul Mo Green based on? The character of Jewish mobster Mo Green is wildly believed to be based on a real-life Las Vegas mobster, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Both characters were involved in the development of Las Vegas casinos, and both were killed in similar fashion. In the movie, Mo Green is portrayed as a ruthless gangster who is heavily involved in the development of Las Vegas casinos. Similarly, Bugsy Siegel was a notorious mobster who played a major role in the development of Las Vegas as a gambling mecca. They were involved in the founding of a major Las Vegas casino. In the movie, Mo Green is a co-founder of the fictional Tropicana Casino, while Bugsy Siegel was one of the key figures behind the founding of the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in real life. Both were killed in a similar manner. Mo Green is assassinated while getting a massage in his home, with shots fired through his eye. Similarly, Bugsy Siegel was killed by a hitman while sitting in his girlfriend's living room, with several shots fired through a window. They both had volatile personalities and were known for their hot tempers. Mo Green is shown as having a short fuse and a tendency to explode in anger. Likewise, Bugsy Siegel was notorious for his violent outbursts and erratic behavior. Who was celebrity Johnny Fontaine based on? Johnny Fontaine is the famous singer and actor in the first film, and maybe would have had more screen time had it not been for Frank Sinatra's public outburst. It is wildly believed that Fontaine's character is loosely based on Frank Sinatra, 
who was a popular singer and actor during the 1940s and 1950s. Both Fontaine and Sinatra had close connections to the Mafia. Fontaine's godfather, Vito Corleone, uses his influence to help Fontaine secure a movie role, similar to how Sinatra was rumored to have received help from the mob in his career. Like Fontaine, Sinatra was also a singer who successfully transitioned into a dual career, to include acting, which resurrected the crooner's fading stardom. Incidentally, Fontaine was portrayed by actor Al Martino, who also got his part with a little help from the mob. Who was the godfather Michael Corleone based on? Similarly, Vito's son, Michael Corleone, is a composite character likely based on several members of New York's five families like his father, particularly Carlo Gambino, Joseph Bonanno, Frank Costello, Vito Ginovese, and especially Salvatore Bonanno. Michael draws on both Costello's calm, cunning demeanor and Ginovese's ambition and willingness to use violence to achieve his goals, but his life pivots most similarly to that of Salvatore, Bill Bonanno, a conciliary for the Bonanno crime family. The young Bonanno was discouraged from entering the family business. Instead, his father wanted him to pursue a respectable career as a lawyer. Just like Michael, he rejected that path and became a mobster instead. Unfortunately for him, he never gained the family's respect, as he was more like the second Corleone's son, Fredo, when it came to his personality. He was insecure, foolish, and a freeloader of his family's money. The Godfather not only took inspiration from notorious figures in the criminal underworld, but from famous events as well, many of which revolved around Michael. At Louis' Italian restaurant, in what is recognized as one of the Godfather's most famous scenes, Michael makes a significant transition from being a decent person to becoming a full-fledged gangster. Michael arranges for two of his father's rivals to settle their score over dinner. While there, he shoots and kills them. This sequence was based on one of the most notorious public executions in mob history, that of Giuseppe Joe the Boss Masseria. Legendary gangster Charles Lucky Luciano was being mentored and directed by Masseria when Luciano, ripe with ambition and committed to overthrowing his mentor, invited him to lunch. As Luciano ran to the men's room, Masseria was shot and killed by several hitmen. Soon after the assassinations, Michael goes into hiding in Sicily where he meets Apollonia falls in love, and marries her. Events that mirror the lives of Lucky Luciano and Vito Genovese. Lucky Luciano, like Michael, left for Italy. But unlike the newly minted Corleone mafioso who had fled New York, Luciano was deported by the federal government. He lived in Naples, where he established ties with the Sicilian mafia, conducting his criminal business from the old country in the same way Michael worked with the Sicilian Don Tomasino. Luciano also met the love of his life while in Italy a young woman from Milan named Aguia Lisoni. Luciano attempted to return stateside but died at the airport in Naples. In the same fashion, Vito Genovese fled to Italy after killing fellow mobster Ferdinand Boccia. His participation in Boccia's murder was eventually discovered and he was sent back to the U.S. where the case against him eventually fell apart. Years later, Vito Genovese, like Michael Corleone, testified in the congressional hearings that brought him and mobster Frank Costello before the public in the middle of the last century called the Vallaki hearings, named after star witness Joseph Joe Vallaki, also known as the McClellan hearings. It inspired the Senate hearing in The Godfather Part II that compelled Michael to speak about the Mafia, a hearing that was also televised as it was in real life. Real-life mobster Vallaki was the first Mafia member to show up in public and admit the crime organization's existence, which ultimately led to its demise. What was revealed during these hearings helped popularize the term Cosa Nostra and the American Mafia, subsequently allowing the public to draw inspiration for artistic productions, such as Puzo's novel and Coppola's films. The Godfather trilogy's success may have been due in part to these real-life people and events, but it is also worth saying that it's likely due to a great story, characters, and filmmaking. How well do you know the characters from The Godfather?